Yeah. Thank you. No matter what's going on in my life, playing my violin always makes me feel better. And for that, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I got to thank all these people on stage here with me. <laughs> you can't see them? <laughs> I didn't get here by myself. I was lucky. I had help from my parents. They paid for all those violin lessons. Bought me my first violin. A lot of families out there can't afford that. Or how about my teachers? Like Mrs. Bobinski, my junior high orchestra teacher. <laughs> I had a lot of opportunities growing up. Gave me the confidence to handle the intensity of being in orchestra. But more importantly, helped me handle surviving being a, being a teenager. <laughs> For a lot of kids, these are obstacles. And they send a very clear message. <laughs> Sorry, kid. You're just not cut out to play music. Sometimes it gets heavier than that. Like, <laughs> sorry, kid. You're really not cut out to do anything. Anyway, come with me. Back to August of 1996. I just arrived in Albuquerque, and uh, Jefferson Middle School hired me to teach music classes, but uh, not traditional music classes like band or orchestra. Uh, the students that were in my classes, well, they, they were either required to be there, or in a lot of cases, they were just dumped in there because there was nowhere else to put them. Listen, my principal, she was going to be here any second. She's going to show me in my classroom. And I got to tell you, I'm really excited. I'm going to have my own music classroom. Hey, all right. Yeah, here it is. My very own music classroom. Whoa. <laughs> this place is kind of a dump. What's that? Those are the instruments? <laughs> right. So is there uh, any funding maybe to fix? No. Textbooks over here. Huh. Making music your own. Wow. <laughs> I wonder what the copyright date. Oh my goodness, 1968. <laughs> What's that? What, uh huh. Huh? I have to have the kids ready for a concert in October. Excellent. All right. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. This is not looking good. So there I was in this miserable classroom surrounded by these kids who didn't want to be there. And it turned out to be bigger than that because I discovered a whole population, not only at Jefferson, but across the whole country who love music. They're crazy about music, but they don't choose music in school. The scientist in me wanted some data, so I went searching and here's what I found. The percentage of schools in the US that offer music classes 90%, 90, 90%. Impressive, right? Our schools are offering music. But then I found this. The percentage of students who choose to be in music elective classes is estimated at 12%. 90% of our schools are offering music classes, but only 12% of, of the kids are actually interested. It's a mismatch, right? Or maybe an opportunity. What if we could expand what it means to play music in school? What if we could open the doors so wide that any kid would feel comfortable joining, even if that kid never played an instrument, never took a lesson, or maybe felt intimidated by how the academic culture defines musician? This is what inspired me to create the Rock and Rhythm Band program, and it's based on a very simple premise. Everyone can play music, and I believe that. In fact, we could play some music right here, right now, in 30 seconds. We could create a 700-person TEDx ABQ jam. <laughs> we don't need instruments. We don't need rehearsal. We do need you, and we need a little energy. So are you in? What do you say? Should we do this? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> this is a little warm-up we do in Rock and Rhythm Band. Opens up the ears, gets the mind thinking rhythmically. Very simple call and response. I clap a rhythm, you clap it back. I'm first. Ready? Here we go. more rehearsals, we're going on the road. Take, we're going to hit the road. <laughs> so with Rock and Rhythm Band, instead of starting with standards and benchmarks, objectives, we start with the students. And we meet them at their developmental level. And if we're going to do that, we got to inspire, and we got to inspire big time. 
Because I believe if a kid is sitting in school and that kid doesn't care, is not curious, is not interested, doesn't want to learn, then I say not only are we wasting time and money, but we're actually doing damage, emotional damage. And I see it in their eyes every single day. They're sitting there, but <laughs> inside, ooh. Bill Cosby has an uh, amazing uh, description of teenagers getting ready for school in the morning. He says, for those of you who have children, you've seen them come downstairs for school. Does it have to be like that? Do kids have to be miserable like, at the thought of going to school? How can we inspire them? Well, we could give them electric guitars and drums and keyboards. We could have them play contemporary music that they like. Yes, that will engage them. But as I got into, into this a little deeper, I discovered a much more compelling reason why these kids, even though they love music, weren't joining music classes and felt unmotivated and unsuccessful in school. And that is the culture of the classroom and of the school. When a kid enters the classroom, does he feel excited? Does she think, my voice matters here? Is he thinking, you know what, I'm going to get the help I need to succeed? When kids walk in a classroom, are they thinking, I wonder what amazing thing is going to happen today? <laughs> so come with me, back to that depressing classroom. <laughs> Not anymore, because now it's the rock and rhythm band room. And it's a little black box theater, a middle school rock and roll club, complete with lights, sound system, and more than enough instruments to handle 30-piece rock bands of 7th and 8th graders rehearsing and performing every day in school as part of their daily schedule. <laughs> and all while meeting state and national standards. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's funny, um, we expect kids to be good at everything. But as adults, do we expect that of ourselves? Albert Einstein said, everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it'll spend its whole life thinking that it is stupid. If we can inspire kids to be passionate and successful at just one thing, I really believe that success will reverberate throughout their lives beyond anything we could imagine. And I'd like to close today with the real stars of rock and rhythm band, the students. Uh, so you know that 88% I was talking about? Yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look. We got a little video, video montage for you of Jefferson Middle School's rock and rhythm bands here, everybody.